from the first time I visited the Orsay Museum, I was fascinated by the fact that many of the works exist in that transition from the realism and recording and classicism that has a lot in common with photography. And after photography, uh, the desire to express things that can only be expressed in painting. What is very curious for me is the Orientalists. A lot of the time they have just a false exotism. They push the features of the Orient to make it more exotic and palatable to the West. But what I about, uh, love about Guillaume is that, uh, first of all, he captures the light in a beautiful way. This painting or prayers in the evening of the Sahara, they both capture a moment of twilight or a moment of dawn. They have uh, the power to uh, show you the landscape, the magnificence and the indifference of the landscape to the tragedies that are, are happening there or the life that is happening there, the dimension is, is uh, tremendous. And the uh, uh, way he captures the light is completely painterly. You know, to me it's not a photographic record of something. It's expressive and it captures a moment uh, with color and light. The other thing that I love about the painting is that it exists either at the beginning of the day or the end of the day. The light in the foreground is very dim and then as you go deeper in the painting, the light of the sun either dying or being born in the distance is emerging or going down. For me, it's very symbolic of this transition from the living animal to the dead animal or from life to death. There is an incredible realism with the decomposing carcass of the animal and there is a beautiful symbolic serenity. The composition is, favors the sky. It is a sky that is indifferent and beautiful uh, above the animal on the horizon line. And uh, to me, it does something that uh, photography or just a simple record of an image wouldn't do. For me, that is unique in the Orientalists. It's not trying to sell you a postcard or a classicist uh, moment of beauty, you know. It captures the, the beauty and the brutality of the landscape and the world. The beauty of a painting like this is when it can work both as a fantastical image and an image of uh, utter reality, realism. It is almost like a crime or a forensic record of, uh, of sorts and at the same time a sublime uh, spiritual uh, landscape and mo a motif. The fact is that through technique and through images you can convey an atmosphere and the atmosphere can be entirely realistic uh, or it can be uh, fantastic and, and there is a sense of uh, the joining of two elements that are very, very paradoxical, beauty and death, you know, life and death, and uh, uh, beauty and decomposition. The carcass is decomposing, but there is a majesty to the landscape and to the size of the figure. The size of the figure is very prominent in the foreground, in the center. It is not a small, little figure lost in the light. So there is, when you place the figure closer to the lens or in the center of the canvas, you are saying this is, the, this is the subject of the composition. This is not an accident of the landscape. So there is a perfect balance of indifference, the indifference of the landscape and the sort of uh, centerpiece of it which is the decomposing camel. And again, to me, the technique, the composition, the color, all this uh, is important, but thematically, the fact that he chooses two transitional moments in the transition of light and the transition between life and death for the animal, you know? And, and that marriage is what makes it uh, have a spiritual, more than fantastic is a spiritual dimension. Me as a filmmaker, 
I, I want to understand the composition uh, in the way I divide and favor subject, context, you know, and I think the composition for me is uh, very much an epic composition because he's favoring the sky above the horizon line. And uh, the way he uh, uses the light is a way in which uh, in cinematography you have to favor the, the information in the darker areas or the information in the lighter areas. And because he's shooting it at a golden hour, whether it's uh, sunrise or sunset, he can balance both, even more so than in photography, especially at that time, he's balancing it with a painterly eye. And I think the, the way he captures the cooler tones in the foreground and the warmer tones in the background, uh, to me, is, is just uh, uh, absolutely fantastic.